This is The Real Hustle, Celebrity Scammers. In this series, the hustlers carry out scams that are bigger, tougher, and more devious than ever before. With the help of their celebrity friends, hustlers Alex, Jess, and Paul, pull off the riskiest scams of all, long cons. Intricate webs of lies and deception designed to separate the unwary from their money. On tonight's show, Lisa Snowden puts in her bid to become a hustler. The best we can do is, is £3,000. I'm authorised to write you a cheque right now. It's bottoms up for Jess. Ah, oh, that's oh. out of order. And this guy wants to tell it to the judge. I've got to tell you, it's absolutely outrageous. Do you understand that this I... is from the clerk of the court, sir? All the people in this show have been hustled for real, and after being given their money back, they agreed the footage could be shown so that you could avoid falling for the same scams. The hustlers have invited celebrity friends to help them carry out their long cons. They'll be thrown in at the deep end. No training and no practice. Just straight into the scam. This week's celebrity guest hustler is model and Capital Radio breakfast presenter, Lisa Snowden. I have no idea what to expect. It's absolutely killing me. I just don't want to let anybody down today. I don't want to let the hustlers down. I really want to do a good job. As what, I'm yet to find out, but I'm going to do my damnedest to do my best. Lisa has been told to sit outside a coffee shop. She has no idea what's expected of her, but she's about to find out from Jess. How are you, you too? How are you doing? Good. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, well, you're going to help us convince somebody that a cheap painting is worth a fortune. You're going to go in right next door, this oh shop here. Okay. Yeah. You're going to pick the painting. Now, it has to be something cheap, maybe around £50, nothing more than that. Okay. Shortly after that, you're going to be receiving a phone call from Paul. You need to describe to him where the painting is and exactly what it looks like. Okay. So, Lisa has to go into a nearby collectible shop, pick a painting, and describe it to Paul over the phone. All being well, some marks will then turn up and buy that painting. Now, once the marks walk in, you can't be recognised by them because you will be seeing them later okay. on, OK? Yes. Lisa. Put some brandy in here. Calm me now. Time for Lisa to become a hustler in The Art Attack. Hi. There are a number of paintings in the collectible shop. Lisa must pick one that costs around £50, but looks like it could be an undiscovered masterpiece. Just down the road is a smartly dressed gentleman about town. Paul heads into a bar to see if he can find some suitable marks. Hi, it's Rob. If you get this, call me as soon as you can. Thank you. Paul has targeted these people. Time to put the scam into action and bait the trap. Lisa makes a call to Paul. This is Rob. Hey, it's Lisa. Hi, hi. Yeah, listen, um... Here's how it works. Lisa's going to give Paul an exact description of the painting she's chosen. And Paul will then repeat everything she says so that the marks can hear. There's a little shop down here called Past Caring. I've just seen a piece. Um, they want 50 quid for this. It's actually worth about two grand. Now that Paul has the mark's attention, he's going to describe the painting to them in precise detail. No, let me get this right. It's uh, lots of blues and creams. It's like a Pac-Man. Very blue and cream, and it has an image on it which is like a Pac-Man. With a big upside-down triangle taken out of it. It's large, abstract. Yeah. Kind of an abstract Pac-Man with an upside-down triangle on it, and it's, it's quite a big piece. And there's like a guitar behind it. It's right in front of a guitar. There's a guitar right behind it. There's a bunch of paintings, and it's the one at the back. Okay, if you can get there, pick it up and let me know. 
If not, I'm If the painting's such a bargain, why doesn't Paul get off the phone and just buy it? I can't buy it because Julie's taking my wallet. She's. I'm waiting for her here to go and buy it. And you're quicker because than he doesn't have his wallet. Worth, I'm telling you, it's worth two grand. I want to call Ian over at the auction house and see if I can put it in there. Um, Maybe his misfortune could be their chance to make some serious money. Really but fun. will they take the bait? All right, thank you, thank you. Thank you, bye. Paul pops to the toilet, giving the guys the perfect opportunity to get a head start and grab the easiest £2,000 they've ever made. They don't hang about. That means Lisa needs to make herself scarce. If all goes to plan, they'll be meeting her later, and if they recognise her, the entire scam will be ruined. Just as Paul said, there's some paintings in front of a guitar. Can the Marks find the right one? So far, so good. But will they buy it? Looks like Lisa's got herself a sale. She calls Paul to let him know. He followed the marks and is waiting right outside the shop. Bill. Okay, bingo. Okay. The marks have taken the bait. Now it's time for the hook. The guys are probably not too keen on running into Paul outside. After all, they've just snatched the painting from right under his nose. Excuse me. Did you just buy that from in there? Uh, yeah, mate. I was here to buy that as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you, know, do you know what you've got there? No, not exactly, but I quite like it. How much do they charge you for it? It's only 50 quid, so... Yeah, it's worth about two grand. No way. As if he didn't know. Did you buy this for yourself, or are you interested in selling it? My no, name's... I'm interested in selling it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, my name's Rob. I'm, a, I'm an art dealer. Hi. Um, I have a friend around the corner who I've called. And I've got an auction on today. We used to have slots in case we want to slot something in. You guys are interested in putting it in a slot. 10% commission. Abignail is very, very collectible. Part of the Glasgow school, so he's incredibly popular right now. I mean, help me out. I'm good for my uh, profile. Not only have they pulled a fast one on this art dealer, he's also offering to do all the hard work for them by selling the painting. You want to go for it? Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather have the money, but the prestige of putting that in today would actually be quite nice. Why don't we head down here? Yeah. Um, a nice piece as well. You've got a good eye, I've got to tell you that. Paul walks the marks down the road to a local auction house. Sounds like he's got a good relationship with the manager there. No surprise, because that auction room manager is Alex. Waiting outside the venue to receive the painting. Why? How much did you buy that for? Oh my God! Leave it with me, and um, I'll get my people to type up a sheet and stick it towards the end somewhere. Excellent. That's really exciting. I mean, that's that's a great find. All right. Well, I'm going <laughs> to consider yourselves very lucky. We'll speak later. I'll All right. rush this through. Take okay. care. Right. Take care. All right. Thank Cheers. You. It's looking like a good afternoon for these marks. They've spent just £50 on an expensive painting and stand to make thousands. Right? Right. Lots of interest on this one. £500, we have a bit. £600 pounds a bit. £1,000 a bit. When hustlers go out, they don't bring money. They go armed with prop bets. Right. But a prop bet only has one rule. <laughs> Do you give up? And that's that the hustler always wins. Oh. Drinks, please. Thank you. Oh. Jess fancies a drink but has no intentions of buying one herself. <laughs> you like shots? Yeah, love them. Okay, well, this one can be for you then. Okay. That eager. <laughs> I'm going to get them over. Thank you very much. For this prop bet, Jess needs a shot glass full of whiskey, another full of water. A glass tumbler water. and a plastic card. That's the water. Place it into the tumbler. Now I'm going to put the card on top of the whiskey. I'm gonna... It's OK. A little dribble is fine. No one minds that. Oh, 
to say a trick to that or something. Or like... That's not the trick. That's not the trick. That's not it. <laughs> the challenge is for a round of drinks, okay? You have to get the whiskey from the top shot glass into this tumbler here without touching the shot glasses. And you can't touch the tumbler either. Okay. So if this guy wants to get out of buying a drink, he has to make the whiskey in the top shot glass empty into the tumbler. The only problem is he's not allowed to touch any of the glasses. So give me some, uh, you know, what, what are you thinking? Give well, me some explanations. Um, so we're not allowed to touch it? Yeah. I don't know what I'm thinking. If you can't touch it... You can shake the table. No. But I can't use the white card either. No. I'll give yeah. up. Yeah? I'll give up. I'll give up. So you asked if you could use the white card and I said no. <laughs> But you can use a straw. Oh, that's out of order. Are you going to drink it? Straw. Well, you think I'm going to drink it? But how, how are you going to use this? What's the straw? Yeah, go on. Okay, well, watch. Go on. Okay. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very clever. That's very clever. Very really impressed. Really 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 so you owe us all the drink oh, now. Oh, yeah. Really Jess lined up the two shot glasses mouth to mouth. Alcohol is less dense than water, so it just sits on top and doesn't mix, if done slowly. She then offset the glasses slightly to create a tiny gap. A firm blow with the straw on this gap caused the whiskey to come pouring out and into the tumbler. That is really good. Oh, well Thank you. Very cool. We're all expected to do our duty to society, such as showing up in court for jury duty. But in recent years, scammers have been targeting thousands of people and using their public spirit against them. This is the jury duty scam. Alex and Paul are going to knock on someone's door, but they're not cold calling. They know exactly where they're going and who they're going to meet. They pull up to a business address in South London. Dressed in dark suits with ID badges, they look like the kind of officials you'd rather not have knocking on your door. Hi. Hi. Looking for Robert Francis Coppel. Is that you? That's not me. No. Okay, can you speak to him, please? Yeah, sure. Can you come in? Yeah. Um, just okay. Last week's morning? Um, yeah, we're on the clock for the court. It's uh, private matter. Can you speak to someone? Looks like someone's got themselves into a spot of bother with the law. Hi. 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 Robert Francis Copper. Yeah. I'm Robert Marks. I'm a clerk of Her Majesty's Court. For what? You've been given summons which you've not responded to. And uh, no, summons for jury duty. Jury duty. Wait. Oh, several, actually. I've had several letters that we've never responded to. That's um, news to him. Is this your home address? I don't remember getting these. We also have um, your signature. Is this one here from the Royal Mail? Yeah. Is that your signature? Yeah. So this is a registered letter delivered to you, which you failed to respond to. Even though the mark can't remember the letters, he can clearly see his signature on the postal delivery form. But ignoring jury duty is a serious business. Uh, for failing to respond to the court, there is a, a fine of £200. Um, you may, if you wish, come with us to the court in order to pay the money, or you can pay it to us here. I, I, I mean, I must, you know, I must admit, I'm not the most... Uh, I don't remember getting any jury time. Why would I not reply to it? Is it possible you've forgotten or you were busy when you received it? No. These are copies of the letters that we sent you the 7th of October, 9th of September and 6th of August was the first one. I, I don't accept that I've had any of these, to be frank. Hmm. You know, I might be wrong, but I don't accept that I've had any of them. Are you able to make payment of the... Absolutely the not. No, I'm not giving you 200 quid for something I don't accept. Well, okay. Even in the face of all this evidence, the mark isn't playing ball. Looks like this isn't going to be an easy payday for the hustlers. I'm willing to accept you. Well, I, don't, I don't even know who, who are you. Um, you know, my name is Robert Marks. This is Ian Steele. Um, we're from Her Majesty's Court Services. Uh, we're based at the Old Bailey in London. Mm -hmm. and the judge looks on it very, very poorly. He will issue you a larger fine. If you can prove to the judge that 
you didn't ignore the letters, you will be refunded your costs and you will just have you to know, serve... It's not a question of refunding because I'm not paying it. Absolutely right. not. I'm not giving it to you. Right. Right. For something I don't accept. That's well, fine. It's outrageous. That's well, fine. What's going on? That's fine. Yeah, no, no, it's not a private yeah. man. It's yeah. my business partner. Yeah. They're saying I've had these jury yeah. summons, which I haven't replied to. Mm. You know. Mr. Copper, the fact is, is that we do have your signature from your location. Uh, His signature uh, seems like rock solid yeah, proof. Nice. He did receive those yeah, letters. To be fair, I've got people coming here, and you know. Uh, well, I don't wish to embarrass you at your place of work, but this is where we've been sent. To. So how do I pay this? Um, you can pay with a cheque or with cash. It's up to you. Paying £200 to make this messy situation disappear seems like the only option. You know, I've got to tell you, it's absolutely outrageous. Can do I, you understand that this I, is from the clerk of the court, sir? Is the mark is livid, but begrudgingly right. hands over £200. A few formalities, and they're all best of friends. Apologise for inconvenience. That's it. No, I know you got job. It is a dirty job, but the pay is great. The hustlers drive off, leaving one very puzzled Mark. How could they possibly have his signature if he doesn't remember getting the registered letter? The Mark did receive a registered delivery, but it wasn't a jury summons. It was just a cheap book packaged to look like a business gift and delivered by Jess. Can you just sign this for me? Thank you. And just like that, the hustlers had his signature on a computer notepad. It's lovely. Thanks very much. All right, Have so a nice I'm, day. I must say, you're the prettiest delivery girl I've ever seen. That's very kind of you to say. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Back in the den, Jess then transferred the signature onto the official looking delivery receipt. Well, it says jury summons, but I mean, it's got my kosher address. It's a fair facsimile of my signature, I have to be, be honest about it. But it's unusual that they should demand cash there and then, you know. But uh, I've got some people coming here for a business meeting shortly, and I, I wanted to get bloody rid of them, you know. They got my 200 quid, that was genuine, you know. This scam takes advantage of people's respect for authority. And with a little bit of fake evidence, the Mark thinks that the best thing to do is pay now and deal with it later. Now remember, this was at one point the number one scam in the United States of America because the story is so feasible. Always be careful when someone is trying to pressure you into making decisions quickly and giving over money without having time to think. There are literally hundreds of people who have paid out money in these circumstances. The courts don't send out people demanding money in that way. You're not going to be fined on the spot for failing to turn up at jury duty. If somebody comes to you in those circumstances, you should immediately phone the police. Earlier today, Lisa Snowden picked a cheap painting in a second-hand store. Paul then had a loud phone conversation in front of these marks, making it sound like the painting was an undiscovered masterpiece. The, the 150 quid for this, it, it's actually worth about two grand. The marks bought the painting for just 50 pounds. Did you just buy that? Come in there. I'm, I'm and have let Paul it. enter it into an auction. I know I can make two grand. Expecting to make thousands in return. That's a great point. Consider yourselves very lucky. In The Art Attack, part two. Here we go then, lot number 247. The auction is already underway as Paul and the Marks arrive and are welcomed by boss Alex. And there are some familiar faces in the crowd. Jess and Lisa. The success or failure of this scam rests on her celebrity shoulders. Lot number 248. 248. Another painting is under the hammer, and it's attracting some high bids. £1,300 all done. Now the marks have got comfortable. It's time for Lisa and the hustlers to reel them in. 1100 1200 with me. Lisa stands up as the next lot gets underway, leaving her auction brochure behind. 17, anywhere around 1,700 pounds. At 1,800 pounds, those beautiful oils. 1,800 pounds, 18 with you Bits now, Bits are coming 18, from all 19, corners. And their painting is up next. At 1,900 pounds. Time for Jess to get involved. Excuse me, it's 
That's from that book show I lost in my Thank you. It's got 4,500 written on it. Is this your brochure? It's not. Inside the catalogue is a sheet for a late entry, their painting, and it has £4,500 scribbled on it. It must be how much one of the bidders is willing to pay. I don't think I should be seeing that. It's a good job I was going to bid for that, but I can't afford it now. Thank you. So I, 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 don't, I don't know who that was. Right on cue, here's Lisa for her catalogue. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. She takes a seat at the phones. She'll be acting on behalf of a phone bidder, who the marks now suspect will go up to £4,500. For the scam to work, Lisa's performance needs to be completely convincing. Paul's got some last-minute advice. In case the bidding's a little slow, I give you a signal? Just... As he was already a registered seller in the auction, the painting has been entered under Paul's name, not the marks. He suggests they might want to put some bids in themselves to drive up the price. Just give you a thumbs up, OK? Now, it's time for the auction. This is a Frank Abagnale abstract oil on canvas. Lots of interest on this one in such a short space of time. And a telephone bidders as well. So I'll do my best to accommodate everybody. 500, then. 500, get it in. 500, we have a bid. 600, anywhere with us? 600 pound is the bid. The marks can't believe their luck. The they only paid That's 50 pounds, and they've already made a huge one, profit. Who knows how high this could go? 800 pounds on the phone. 900 pounds anywhere on this one. This one. Paul signals to start pushing the price up. Beautiful piece. 900 pounds is the bid. You're out on the phone at the moment, looking for a thousand now. 1,000 pounds is the bid. 1, it's down to a bidding war between the guys and whoever's on the phone. 1,100. 1100 at the back of the room. They have anywhere. no worries about 14, pushing the price up the with their inside knowledge. At 1500 pounds, 1500 pound back of the room. 1600 pound on the phone. 17 with us. 1800 pound is the bid. 1900 pound is the bid now. 1900 pounds at the back of the room. The marks the have the, the current room. highest bid at 1900 pounds. Over to Lisa pounds, to outbid them. 2000 pound anywhere. At 1900 pounds at the back of the room. But something's pounds just pounds gone horribly wrong. £2,000, £1,900 at the back of the room. Are you all done on this one? At this crucial moment, the phone lines have gone down. On this one, 2000 is the bid. Leaving the marks still as the highest bidders. I have to move on. Selling then at £1,900, at £1,900. So, do you remember, sir? The hammer comes down like a ton of bricks. Two, three, eight. They've just bid almost £2,000 for a painting they already own. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to take a small break um, while we sort out our telephone system and then we'll resume the auction. Thank you for being here. Okay. There was a bid coming in. Well, I'll stay in your seats. I'll have a word with them. Can Alex and Paul help the Marks out of this sticky situation? Okay, I'm going to need to go and use my mobile. This is not on. I just can't believe this has happened. Lisa's putting in the performance of her life. She's not happy about it either, so let's just see where she stands. We need to figure that There's a chance that the phone builder may want to buy the painting off them directly, so the Marks could still make a profit. Who is having a word with them now. What I want to try and do is give it a range for a private sale, so she will pay you directly. I know that they, they're very interested in buying it, because I was on the phone to them earlier. So away from here, just for a second. Alex goes off to get Lisa. This is the first time she'll come face to face with the marks. She has to be totally convincing in her role as a disgruntled phone agent. He really wants this piece, so the best we can do is, is £3,000. I mean, I'm authorised to write you a cheque right now, but... That's it. Okay. I mean, this shouldn't have happened. This is no, no, I take full I understand this shouldn't happen. I mean, if there was another collector in the room, you would have probably hit five. With, you know that. With all due respect, this isn't an issue right now. I understand now. that. This, this is nothing to I do... I understand that, but 3500 it's got to be a fair price for these guys. I don't hold yeah. out much hope. I'm okay. being very honest with you. Okay. He's not a happy okay. man right now. Yeah, you'll pay. <sighs> she certainly knows how to drive a hard yeah, bargain. OK, what do you want? OK, all right. We've, all right? Yeah, we've made a decision. Good. That's good for everybody. Let's so what's the news second. from the phone uh, bidder? Yeah. But uh, just to let you know, um, she's writing you a cheque, a personal cheque, for 3500 to your name. Result. Lisa's boss is willing to buy the painting from the Marks for £3,500. 
But in order to get it, they have to buy back their painting from the auction house. I need to show a transaction from you. Right, OK, it's because you it's your number yeah. and it's a legally binding contract. Once it goes contract. in the record, it's So once, it comes to, once the money comes to me, it then goes to the owner of the, owner of the painting, it goes to Rob, and I'll Rob will pay you directly. So they need to give Alex the 1900 they so, bid yeah. in the auction. But, um, but they'll get that money right back from Paul, the registered yeah, seller. Then they'll be free to sell the painting to Lisa for a whopping profit of three and a half grand. Will the Marks go for this amazing deal and put their hands in their pockets? The hustlers give the marks a little time to pool their resources and get together the money. Come in. There That's go, fine. 1,900 pounds. Um, I trust you, you've just counted it. And in return, they get a check for three and a half thousand. Plus, there's another check from Paul to reimburse them for the 1,900. Messy, but profitable. <laughs> Can't really complain. No. It was a hair-raising nice experience, but everything like, you know, has worked really, out in the um, end. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, let me see you. Sorry about the confusion. Your umbrella, yeah. um, thank you again. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks for your help. Take care. I'll, I'll be back You're in just a second. The marks leave overjoyed with their massive three and a half grand profit, but there's one tiny problem: the 1,900 quid in cash that they gave Alex is real, but those two checks for the combined total of 5,400 a very fake. As fake as the whole auction house, which was set up by the hustlers. As fake as the other buyers, who were all in on it. Uh, you guys are all going to be given catalogues with numbers. We're going to specify who bids for what and who wins what. And as fake as Lisa's phone call to a mystery bidder that didn't really exist. The hardest part was just sort of gauging the tone and knowing how far to push them. I mean, I was amazed that they were even bidding, actually, when the phones went dead. I mean, oh, they wanted that money, didn't they? So, wow. We told the Marks those checks are completely worthless. Absolutely, absolutely gutted. I don't know about anything to do with that. I just went on what he said. There was, other, there was other bids going on when we came in. This was... We were, like, mid. Although, after ours, it would just stop. And everyone went. And everyone went. <sighs> the opportunity to make a large sum of money for very little outlay is very hard to resist. Also, this scam places the marks in a territory that they're very unfamiliar with. So what do they do? They look for advice from an expert. Unfortunately for them, that expert happens to be Paul. This is a classic case of something being too good to be true. At the end of the day, a cheque is just a worthless piece of paper unless it's been cashed and cleared by your bank first. 